Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch and welcome as I bring you to Ontario in Canada. You're about to see an awesome Cadillac collection. As we make our way across the United States for 2023, it's thanks to Shannon's in this week's Classic Restos Stateside. <laughs> Staying in Detroit, it's just a quick jump across the border into Canada and around a two hour drive taking in the gorgeous Canadian countryside brings us here to possibly the largest private Cadillac collection in the world. It's time now to meet Steve Plunkett. Steve is no stranger to classic restos. I had the liberty to interview Steve here around 10 years ago. It's so good to be back. And collections can change. Well, how about collecting Cadillacs, along with some other brands as well? In fact, the stable here comprises an 82 General Motors car collection, 50 Cadillacs, 14 Buicks and two Corvettes, just to name some. And there's no place better to do that than Steve's automotive extravaganza, set on a beautiful private 105 acre estate with four stone homes and a 31 car, 10,000 square foot garage. Time now to catch up with the man himself. Steve, it's awesome to be back. Great to have you, Fletch. I'm glad you're back. The place uh, hasn't changed in some ways, has in others. You've, you've got a few new cars that have come along into the collection. But before we start talking about that, the property here is looking as beautiful as ever. Well, it's a fall, but it's still, it's still nice out, yes. The lawn is still green and that type of thing. I remember um, uh, Steve is no uh, stranger to Classic Restos. Around about 10 years ago, we, we featured this gentleman on Classic Restos. And I remember the first time swinging into the driveway and looking over to my right and thinking, wow, that's a, that's a beautiful home. And it was this building here uh, to then uh, find out that this is where some of your prize collective cars are mm -hmm. we keep uh keep the uh, the very rare stuff in here the uh major uh collector collectible cadillacs and that type of thing cars with a story and some of these have quite a story well they they have their own home here right they do yes that's right it's got its own staircase uh, the foyer there the beautiful uh cadillac standard of the world there to greet you on the big floor mat uh it's an opulent environment here it's absolutely uh, it's always been amazing here steve we have to comment on a few cars here. Let's start with this 1956 Buick behind us here. Now, this is an incredible story. Again, around about 10 years ago, I had the opportunity of catching up uh, with some uh, gentlemen not too far away from here or down uh, in the United States there, and I drove a Buick chassis. It was just a, a chassis with a seat, had a plywood firewall, two four-barrel carbs, and I took this car for a drive up and down the gentleman's driveway. And uh, it went like sting. It was just no weight. It had these two four barrels on a V8. And on arrival here today, I have found out that this very Buick behind us is the body on that chassis that I drove. This is an incredibly special car, a Bill Mitchell car in design, 1956. You take it from here and tell us about this car, Steve. <laughs> Bill Mitchell's dad was a Buick dealer, so he kind of favored Buicks. And again, I love cars with a story, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, uh, Cadillacs or Chevs or whatever, it doesn't matter. And this is a really special car. This is a 56 Buick Century convertible with 225 factory modifications from a production car. It has... Uh, 
the, the wildest features to it, uh, the, the traditional uh, red frame and red wheel wells and so on, Seminole red, I think they call the color. It has uh, features on it that uh, you didn't see until decades later in auto production. Uh, power swivel eight-way bucket seats, electric headrests. They didn't put headrests in cars till 67. This is a 56. Uh, the rear view mirror is uh, glued to the glass. They didn't do that till the next decade. Uh, Corvette tachometer on the dashboard. It has uh, uh, ground effects where when you open the door, the ground lights up. Steve, looking in the interior, it is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. And you can see the shape of the seats, the style of those seats, which then took us into the era of even not too far away from the seats out of a Camaro. Mm -hmm. um, you could see uh, uh, Bill Mitchell's styling way ahead. And there's accolades here. The big three, they all did incredible things. But General Motors at this time, they are outstanding, weren't they? A tremendous design. Yeah, they had a real dream team of a group of designers in the, uh, at the GM Tech Center and so on. It was just incredible. Even the floor mats in this car, you see that type of thing in El Dorado. They're a built-in, bolted-on floor mat with chrome trim around it. Accelerator and brake pedal are chrome trimmed and so on. Just incredible, just, just neat touches. I always show the engine last. Then I open the hood and everybody goes silent. The correct restoration is the same Buick engine, the nail head engine, the 322 cubic inch. It has a special intake manifold. They only made three of these engines. A special intake manifold that holds four Carter side draft carburetors used on Corvette of that time and then later Corvair. On the front grills of these Buicks, I've always admired how outstanding that emblem is with the year that's embossed in front there. Now, this has got 1956, but an X after it. Tell us what the X is. Experimental. Moving on now to Steve's 1949 Cadillac, a special car. They're all special cars. They've got incredible stories. What's the story with this one, Steve? This is one of two made, 1949 Cadillac Woody Limo, uh, specially made for MGM Studios to show for the uh, uh, actors and support staff to and from movie shoots. It was damaged too. I see the storyboard on the front there. What, what happened there? They actually totaled it. They, uh, they were on their way to Big Bear Lake, with, which apparently is a beautiful drive, but it's a curvy, dangerous drive, and they missed a turn, and they rolled it over the cliff. Anyway, it ended up at an auto wreckers, and in 1960, one of the previous owners of this car that came later uh, remembers seeing it in San Bernardino, California, at the auto wreckers. They took two of the doors off and made a guard dog kennel out of it. How did you acquire the car? Well, it's funny, about uh, probably 10 or 15 years ago, I was bidding against uh, the former owner of this car. That's why he paid a fortune for it. And uh, then years later, he passed away, and they were dissolving the collection, and uh, I bought it then. It's interesting, too, because the Woody was always for, well, uh, the lesser of the brands, wasn't it? Not mm -hmm. the Cadillac flagship as such. That's right. Yeah, so it's very unusual to have a Woody limo, yeah. one of two made. Steve, so we look at the interior of the car, huge red leather seat there, into the dashboard, beautiful steering wheel, and a police light or a spotlight coming through the A-pillar. Uh, that would have to be an option, of, of course. That would be an after aftermarket option, I would think. Probably put on at the dealer. What uh, powers this? This is a 331 cubic inch overhead valve V8 engine. So this is the engine that uh, uh, accredited uh, Cadillac for Motor Trend Car of the Year and so on. And uh, a two-barrel carburetor on it, but it was pretty powerful. And the actors there in the picture frame uh, in relation to the car, what can you tell us about that? Those are the actors pictured that worked for MGM Studios in 1949. And you'll notice in the middle, at the bottom, the original Lassie is there as well. When I was a kid, I loved cars, still do. The 57 Cadillac Eldorado Brown was the most advanced car in the world. Cost more than a Rolls. Hand built with a stainless steel roof, cruise control, electric seats, and would you believe, air suspension. American iron. It's a passion Shannons understand. That's why they ensure my daily drive, the caddy, my bike, even the house. Call Shannons on 13 46 46. Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. 
When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts. Available through the Holden Certified Service Network. Steve, 1941 Cadillac, the Duchess. What's the story here? Well, Fletch, this is an amazing car. It is a one-off custom-built car made for King Edward uh, after he abdicated the throne to marry the twice-divorced American girl, Wallace Simpson. And uh, they ended up moving to New York. They lived at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. And anyway, uh, General Motors built them this custom-built one-off Cadillac with all kinds of features, and uh, it was um, uh, no doubt Harley Earl and uh, Bill Mitchell were involved in the styling of this car. It's amazing. Run through some of the features. It has uh, a custom uh, ventilation system that uh, is ducted uh, through the engine, down and under. For cli It has actually climate control in a way. Uh, when you uh, set the thermostat to uh, medium heat or high heat or whatever, it thermostatically blends and maintains that temperature. I think it is the first car in the world with power windows. Uh, automatic transmission, which was brand new technology at the time. She was into uh, jewelry, so it has uh, four jewelry boxes. She, uh, he was uh, into pipe smoking, so it has a humidor and a pipe rack. Rear radio, front radio. Uh, very luxurious for the day. And on the outside, if you look at the styling, it has a long diagonal line down the side. Buick stole that the next year. Cadillac never continued with that. That was a, a one-year styling feature for this particular Cadillac. It's amazing, Steve, the ability that they had in the time, not only to just to make a, a one-off car, but to include all those features that were, at the time, they were light years ahead mm -hmm. of production cars. That's right. So they knew about it. They knew about the technology, yep. but I guess they didn't want to introduce that until a little further down the track. They must have a timeline in mind, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, but anyway, it's it's got a lot of neat features. It doesn't share any body panel with any other 41 Cadillac, and it has a build a multiple page build sheet. What powers this up front, Steve? 346 V8 with a two barrel carburetor. So and even that, 346 cubic inches. Yeah, that's in 1941. Yeah. yeah, that's a big engine that in the day, mm. definitely. And the automatic transmission, they're four speeds, right from 1940 on up. Four speeds right up to about 62 or three. They were four speed automatics. Look at that dash. Yep, very beautiful. Uh, uh, the painted wood grain on it. Um, uh, chrome accents around the radio controls and so on. And uh, it's, they're, they're beautiful. You're learning all the time in this game, and it makes sense. You look through the era of cars. It's, it's probably why the cars in the mid-50s, late-50s, into the 60s were as good as they were, because these early platforms were really advanced, weren't they? So some of that, that designing and the engineering skills, it had to follow suit a little bit later on. And durability. Like, everything was overbuilt. Very heavy duty and so on. That's why a lot of these cars survive today. It's, it, they were just heavy metal and uh, the frames were overbuilt and the rear axles were like truck axles today. So they're, everything's rebuildable and so on. Also to have to mention uh, the room in the back of these cars. Um, we just did the Woody over there. There must be four feet or 1,200 mil in the, in the metric of leg room in the back. Mm -hmm. That's just... Um, 
incredible comfort, isn't it? It is. Steve, the little crest or like a little crown on the back door, what, uh, what does that represent? That was a logo that they devised for themselves. That's E for Edward turned upwards and a W for Wallace, and that was their own crest. And that crest is uh, placed in the exact location where it was originally. How did you get it? It came from uh, the southern U.S., uh, I had never met this guy. He spent 400000 U.S. restoring the car and then wanted to sell it. He never even showed the car. Anyway, uh, he had, uh, I guess he found me on the Internet and contacted me, and he sent, he, he was in, from the publishing industry, and he made a beautiful booklet on the car. And he sent me this booklet, mailed a few of them out, and uh, anyway, I bid on it and, uh, and uh, flew down to look at it and bought it. So you were the lucky guy on the day. I sure was, yes. And this plate, this is a copy of their actual original license plate on the car in New York at the time in 1941. The ductwork uh, that originates under the hood, coming down under the car, ends up right here uh, with their own thermostatically controlled ventilation system here. This is the uh, humidor for pipe tobacco, because he was into smoking uh, pipes and the pipes are in storage here on these little doors. And uh, there's jewelry boxes placed. Uh, there's four in total, one in either vanity and two here. Well, you've seen one of Steve's more opulent parts of his property with some majestic vehicles. It's time now to go down the driveway a little bit to a more standard type of a barn. Now, Steve, we've come from the five star and here we are now in a more, well, a basic shed, isn't it? Yeah, it's more standard. It's more uh, relaxed atmosphere, really. But then again, it's, it's your idea of standard, right? It is, Fletch, yes, yeah. I love all the, uh, the memorabilia and the neon signs and that type of thing. It's sort of the opposite of the, of the opulence, as we say. I know you're watching and you're thinking, I'd love that standard shed. And, and what's in it. And again, we are surrounded by Cadillacs here. Uh, we've got some fantastic cars from the 50s, the 60s, special cars. Um, we've got a car down there, Heinz Prechter. Tell us about the two-tone Eldorado down there that used to belong to Heinz. That's a 78 Eldorado. It's a prototype. And back in the days when uh, the big three discontinued all the convertibles, uh, uh, American Sunroof Company would actually, they, they began building convertibles again for the big three. That is a prototype. It's a power T-top Eldorado. And uh, it was, uh, they made one Toronado, a white one, with the power T-top. And they made about, uh, I think, two or three of these. And they presented them to GM uh, as a proposal for taking on the line. But they declined, I think maybe because they were, they were downsizing the cars the next year. Perhaps cost as well. Yeah, it could be, it could be. So that remained a, a prototype and you'll never see another one because uh, nobody has produced, that I know of, a power T-top car. Steve, the stunning black 58 Fleetwood limousine. What's the story on that car? There's actually no story on it at all. It's a low mileage car from New York uh, City and uh, it's a solid body, but actually we're, we're going to, this winter, we're going to take all the chrome off it and it's going to go into the body shop for a full paint job. Uh, they're, they're actually stunning when they're restored. And that's, this is an easy restoration, really. It runs beautifully and so on. I drive it around. And, but uh, when they're done up, they're gorgeous and they're huge. What's your thoughts on restoring? Are you a purist at heart? Do you like to keep something, well, they say patinaed, some people don't like that term, but they like to keep a car original as found and perhaps just do the mechanicals and make it 100% roadworthy. Do you like to go that way or are you a believer of back to a rolling shell and full paint jobs? It depends on the car. Um, for example, if it's, if it's fairly rough or whatever, yes, I, I, I'm big on originality. So we would go with uh, uh, restoring it back to original, that type of thing. If they're, if they're still driving and solid and safe and, and original, that type of thing, yes, I, I, you know, they're only original once, as they say. And uh, it, uh, it's really a novelty to have an original type car. And I have a number of those, actually. 
Steve, the cars aside for a sec as well, you've got a comprehensive selection of memorabilia on the walls, uh, signs, oil cans, the list goes on. Um, obviously, you've been uh, collecting those for a long time. What was your first year? When did you start collecting? Cars, probably 71, 1971 or so. And the signs and memorabilia? Oh, that came much later when I had the building to do it. So I would say 25 years anyway. Yeah, yeah 25 years ago. But uh, yeah, they and and friends, people bring me things and and uh, wondering if I want to buy them and that type type of thing. And I and I acquire them at flea markets and so on. Steve, I want to take this opportunity to to thank you. It's uh, been around ten years since I was here last. It's wonderful to see you. You haven't changed a bit, and um, the atmosphere here it just never ever fails to impress. Uh, you stand for some great things as well. You've got a big heart. Uh, you stand tall uh, with, with different charities and uh, people know you for that as well. Um, you, you share your collection um, and you play a, a big part um, around here for the communities and what have you. Um, so on the behalf of that, keep up your fantastic work and uh, thank, thank you, you for, for another episode here of, of Classic Resto, Steve. Thank you, Fletch. It was great to have you again. Thank you. And I really appreciate my photo, a picture of me up on the wall somewhere. <laughs> It, were, you, were, you, were you starving for space or something, were you? Down at the tunnel, but you're with a lot of famous people down there. We got Fletch right on the wall. Thank you, Steve. Very good. It's been, uh, it's been wonderful seeing you again. All, all the best. Yep. Stay right where you are, because after the break, the Cadillac content continues. Back with more right after this. Every weekend around Australia... Motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people. All sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. And of course, if you own a classic or two, make sure they are insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646 and the Shannon's Club awaits you. Why not sign up to become a member of Australia's largest automotive online hub? For more information, visit shannons.com.au. We've left Canada and passing back through Michigan, we just have to call back in to the Gilmore Museum. They have a replica Cadillac dealership that is a world-class standard and is a must-see. I bring my Fletch tour groups here to the Gilmore Museum and it's one of the largest museums in the United States of America. This recreated 1948 Cadillac dealership was patterned after a design offered in General Motors' book, Planning Automobile Dealer Properties for 1948. It opened in 2014 and houses the Cadillac LaSalle Club Museum and Research Centre, which strives to preserve the legacy of one of America's most successful luxury automobiles. So uh, Fletch has just shown you the amazing Cadillac display here, but it's also worth checking out the Lincoln display as well. There's an amazing collection here of an absolutely wide array of beautiful Lincolns. And interestingly, Henry Leland, who started Cadillac, he also started Lincoln. And Ford bought uh, Lincoln from Henry Leland back in 1922. So do yourself a favour when you come to the Gilmore, it's a must-see collection. Make sure you check out the Lincoln display as well. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Classic Restos, featuring the car collection of Steve Plunkett in Canada and, of course, a little from the Gilmore Museum here in Michigan. 
I hope you enjoyed it. There's more US content coming your way on next week's show as myself and Mark from Shannon's continue to make our way across the United States for 2023. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch. Thanks for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.